This is the Disability News Report with host Arthur Aston. This is the Disability News Report. This show will highlight news stories that focus on topics related to disabilities. I'm your host, Arthur Aston. I have lived with a disability my whole life and raising awareness about the disability community, highlighting issues that impact us to change the way the world views us in the disability community has become my life's passion. On today's episode of the Disability News Report, we will explore how disability is finally being considered in DEI conversations, how disabled students at a major university staged a walkout, a new adaptive sports program that is opening, and much more. So let's get into the news. Our first news story comes from the Psychiatric Times, a medical trade publication written for an audience involved in psychiatry. It is distributed to about 50,000 psychiatrists monthly. At a recent American Psychiatric Association annual meeting held in New York City, Doctors Donald Egan and Jessica Williams reminded the audience that disability must be included in conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Including disability in the diversity, equity, and inclusion conversation is important because 27% of adults living in the United States report having some type of disability diagnosis. 12% identify as having a cognitive disability, 12% identify as having a mobility disability, 6% identify as having a hearing disability, and 4% identify as having a vision disability. So why is this important? Someone diagnosed with a disability is more likely to experience mental health distress than someone without a disability. The doctors also noted that treating psychiatric patients diagnosed with disabilities is not often discussed for long periods of time in medical school. They believe that the more often disability is talked about as it relates to human diversity, the more clinicians will better understand their clients with disabilities, and that this will also increase the number of disabled students who enter medical school. This is a topic we will definitely keep an eye out on just to see exactly how disability is incorporated into more diversity, equity, and inclusion conversations. The next story comes to us from Wisconsin at the University of Wisconsin at Oshkosh, where a small group of students belonging to a group called UW Oshkosh Disability Advocates staged a walkout based on their belief that the university is discriminating against them and that their rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 are being violated. When classes resumed in person after being held online due to the COVID-19 pandemic, disabled students noted that there were more rules in place for them. There was a need for having a doctor's note, delayed and denied request for accommodations, and a lack of academic support and infrastructure These were some of the students' complaints and why they staged a walkout. Accessibility issues, including broken elevators, obstruction on walkways, and a low number of accessible parking spaces are among the additional concerns the disabled students have. The students are seeking an investigation from the U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights and the Wisconsin Department of Justice. They did make a request for an investigation previously to the United States Department of Education, but this was denied. In response to this walkout, the university noted that an $18 million budget deficit occurred in 2023, and this resulted in cutting the staff of the Disability Services Department from a number that was eight employees, and it was cut down to four. We will be sure to update you on any developments on this story and upcoming episodes of the Disability News Report. The next story comes to us from Colorado at the National Sports Center for the Disabled, NCSD. They opened up a new adaptive center. This was possible because they received a $50,000 grant to purchase adaptive cycles. 
The center has over 100 acres of open space and accessible trails. This is so important for people with disabilities to have access to outdoor spaces to enjoy recreation. So having this $50,000 grant to purchase adaptive cycles so that people with disabilities can enjoy these trails is so important and it's so great to have this story highlighted in the news and I'm looking forward to following up and seeing what other activities that the National Sport Center for the Disabled comes up with there in Colorado. The next story comes to us from content creator Allison Lang, who was forced to prove to a stranger that she was disabled after parking in an accessible parking space. Upon arriving at her parking spot, a stranger came up to her window and exclaimed, you can't use your grandma's parking pass to park in handicapped. Now, this is before Allison got out of her car or even had a chance to explain anything. And when she opened her door, the stranger could see that Allison was an amputee. She has her own parking pass and is allowed to park in an accessible parking spot. Upon seeing that she was an amputee, the stranger's response was then, I didn't know, and they followed it up with, you look too young to be disabled. We wanted to share this story for many reasons. Very similar things have happened to me living with a disability and having to use my crutches and my wheelchair. And I don't drive an accessible van because I am able to stand for a short period of time to put my wheelchair together. So it is in my trunk of my small SUV. There are a few reasons why we wanted to share this story. There are such things as invisible disabilities. Those are the disabilities you cannot see that are protected under the Americans with Disabilities Act that will allow someone to legally park in an accessible parking space. Not all disabled people use wheelchairs. Not all disabled people use mobility devices. There is always something that I like to remember to remind people, and that is disability can occur at any time and at any age. I was born with my disability. There are other people who have acquired their disability through an illness, through an accident, when they were children, when they were older adults. There is no time frame for when you can become disabled. It can happen at any time. And lastly, we felt it was important to share this story because the word disability has often come with a negative connotation and just negative stereotypes attached to it. We wanted to share this story because disability should not be considered a bad word or seen as something that is negative. There is nothing wrong with anyone who is disabled. They just have to do things a little bit differently. We are so sorry that this has happened to Allison and to so many others of us who live with disabilities. It is just something that the world should be made more aware of, that people with disabilities are just out there trying to live their everyday life just like everyone else is. And we go out, we explore, our communities, we live in our communities, we go to the store, the movies, the mall, we go to concerts and sporting events, and everyone should just be more kind to everyone else. I think that is the most important thing that we can get out of this story, and just to be more open-minded and uh, expand our knowledge of what disability could look like and what it doesn't look like. We just don't know what someone may be dealing with. So this story is being shared just as a general message to everyone to just be more kind and 
open to other people and what their disability might be. Our last story comes to us from Rutgers University in New Jersey. The university recently hosted a summit to discuss how to remove barriers for the residents of New Jersey who are black and disabled. This event was co-organized and co-hosted by a friend of mine, Laderick Horn, who is a poet, a podcast host, and a disability advocate. This event was an invite only and was attended by 75 people, including representatives from a variety of advocacy groups and government agencies, including the ARC of New Jersey, the Black Consortium, the State Division of Developmental Disabilities, the Advocacy Action Center, NJ Steps, Disability Rights New Jersey, Salvation and Social Justice, the Center for Independent Living, and Autism New Jersey. The keynote speaker was Professor Tamara Good from Georgetown University. The summit was focusing on ways to identify and create strategies to remove barriers that prevent New Jersey residents who are Black and disabled from having full access to opportunities. The summit was funded by the New Jersey Council on Developmental Disabilities and addressed inequities faced by the Black disabled residents of New Jersey in the following areas, education, employment, social services, law enforcement, and legal services, family and self-advocacy, and health care. The article mentioned that disabled African Americans experience higher levels of poverty and greater reliance on public benefits like Medicare, yet they also have a harder time accessing health care. They often face discrimination in medical settings, and they have an adequate health insurance, but yet have a higher rate of chronic health conditions that are poorly managed. Black children with disabilities are less likely to be put into the general education classrooms than white children. They are also more likely to drop out of high school and face more suspensions and school-related arrests than kids of other races. This is all according to Rutgers, Joseph C. Cornwall Center for Metropolitan Studies. We thank you for joining us for this episode of the Disability News Report. I am your host, Arthur Aston, and I look forward to sharing more stories of topics related to disability that are in the news. Take care.